Hello everyone and welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo where we find, learn, and play the greatest strategy games. We are currently doing a Let's Play tutorial slash tutorial, a lot of tutorializing going on early in this one um, because you got to get used to this AG odd system. Uh, but once you do, I think you'll love this game. Great game, Civil War 2, and I believe this is episode number 8. Now, I've scooted back to kind of show us the situation on the eastern front of the war here. As you can see, this has got the traditional kind of board game counters, which I personally like. I don't know, it's pleasing to me, reminds me of my Avalon Hill days. Um, if we scoot in a little bit, well, let's not scoot out. If we scoot in a little bit, you'll see everything is by regions. Uh, so there are just a ton of regions, tons of things that you can do in this game. But hopefully you've been watching and you kind of know where we are here. If you look at the Eastern Front, we've got Beauregard and the Army of the Potomac, as it's now called. Um, he's sitting here building. He's locked as his forces build up. I do believe that he will be unlocked and it says it right there in two turns. But he is building in Manassas. He's building up his, uh, if you see over here, he's building up his entrenchment levels, uh, which is good because we are going to be defending on the Eastern Front here, as was traditional, um, at least until Robert E. Lee jumps into the war and then we'll see what happens. Now, one thing that we talked about at the end of the last episode were command points because command points if I had to pick one concept out of this game, other than how to move, <laughs> which some people struggle with, uh, if I had to pick one concept that was the important, most important out of this game, it's command points. So I just wanted to revisit that for a second, because even someone uh, such as myself that's played this game a million times, I had to sit there and think about uh, why the command points were the way that they were for a second. It, and it really does make a lot of sense once you get used to it. Um, I'm just used to playing with divisions, which will not be available to us until October. In October, once we go into divisions, it becomes even, even easier. But what the game's trying to do right now is model and simulate the fact that command and control early in the war were uh, not as good as they were later on. And so they want there to be a little bit of confusion. Now, the way this works is um, if you do not have command points, so we need 27, that's the first number. That's how many command points we need. That is based on these little divots you see here. So every brigade has so many elements to it. So let's just click on bottom. And bottom has these items here in his brigade. These are elements. So, you know, uh, battalions, regiments, that's what these are down here that make up, uh, I'm sorry, make up Bonham's Brigade. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six elements, and you could read that, or you could count those out over here. Uh, Bonham uh, counts as an element himself. So, yeah, he's got six elements. Uh, James Longstreet here, I believe, has seven elements, you know, that includes himself. But if you add all of these elements up, uh, do not add, if we had a supply train here, do not add that. That does not need command. But any troops, any troops need command, right? Uh, let's click off that and click back on. So we need 27 command points. The maximum that you can have in any stack is 16 the maximum amount of command you can have and that's what's in parentheses here and you say well that says 18 but i'll explain that in a minute so the maximum you can have from your generals is 16 and how do we calculate that beauregard is a three-star general that counts as 12. holmes is a one-star general that counts as four longstreet is a one-star general that counts as four bottom same four so we've got 12 16 20 24 but as i said you can only have a maximum of 16. so in some respects we're wasting some command here because you can't have more than 16 in a stack and the reason that is is to really keep you from making super stacks that are a historical 
you know, if we took Johnston here, down here, and put him in here, and then every other troop that we've got, and we've got this, like, mega super uh, Tetris army, um, they wanted, wanted to avoid that. So they limit you to 16. Except if you have special abilities, you can get bonuses above that 16. Now, you're not going to get a whole lot above 16. I can tell you later on with uh, General Lee, he's got some really nice bonuses um, that can get you up to the, in, to the low 20s. Um, but these special bonuses, you know, Fort Defender, and I believe he's a Deceiver, that adds a couple. So whoever's in the charge of your stack, if they have special abilities, it adds a point for each one to your command. So as you see, our natural maximum is 16, but we have 18. So we've talked about this before. If you're under generaled, if you're under commanded, you get a penalty. So we're seeing a 33 penalty, which is um, about the max. The max penalty you can have in any stack is 35%. So once you get to 35%, you can add whatever you want, but you're going to be fighting at a 35% penalty and you never want to do this. So what could we do about this? Well, not a whole, I mean, our forces are locked. We couldn't move anything out of here, even if we wanted to. Um, so there's really nothing we can do about it because what the game is doing is just modeling how the lack of command and control early in the war would have uh, given you a penalty. So it's giving us a penalty. Now the same over here with Johnston. We had talked about Johnston last time because I was like, hmm, now this is curious because I know you can go to 16. I had to go back and think about the early war stuff. So we've got Johnston, who's a three-star general. That's 12. Uh, Stonewall Jackson, Smith, Bees. These guys are all four because they're one-star generals. So that's how much command they add to us. 12, 4, 4, 4. Again, uh, we've got 24 sitting here. But you can only have a maximum of 16. And you say, well, wait a minute. This says 8. Well, this ran us up to our max of 16. However, because we have not been able to form this into an army yet, and that's through no fault of our own. This is just historically based the Shenandoah force, once Johnson started to form this up up here, it didn't really became, become an army fighting force uh, for another turn or two. So in June, we will be able down here, so we see the special orders, and always go check the special orders for every stack you have, especially a big stack like this. It's very important because there are things you can do. You know, here the Shenandoah force, we could enter the structure here in Strasbourg, we don't want to do that. We want our uh, army camped outside, entrenching. Uh, we could force march them, etc. You can read through these. But one of the special orders here on the tent is to form into an army. This is not yet active. When this becomes active, our maximum will pop up to 16. Um, now, he's got two special abilities, so it will actually be 18. Um, when this becomes active. But as of right now, it's cut in half because we are not in the correct command chain of command uh, because we have this, this kind of independent stack out here that's not underneath any army structure. So it just cuts it in half. Um, this might be a good example, and this is a perfect example. This is John B. Floyd, who we're going to get rid of. He's up here in West Virginia. Now, we've already talked about how we're going to be dropping him back as fast as we can. He's a terrible general. He kills your cohesion. He's a one-star general. He's, command he's providing, uh, he should be providing four, right? One-star generals are four, but he is not in any command structure. He has not formed a core which he can't do yet. These are all grayed out. And this is all, again, because it's early in the war and it's trying to model the command structure. So, you know, normally he would be providing four command out here, uh, but instead it's cut in half, it's two. He's not in any chain of command. So really the only force we have in chain of command is Beauregard's Army of the Potomac because they've been able to be formed into an army and, um, 
so they're they get the full 16 it's not cut in half plus his bonuses so we've got 18 but we're still getting a severe penalty we've got to kind of hope the union doesn't come after us uh with any kind of big force you know they've got us outnumbered here for sure outpowered here for sure but the fact of the matter is uh, they've got some command issues themselves, including just crappy generals. So what's going over here? Going on over here in the West? We've got Johnston here um, in the Shenandoah Valley. He's digging in. We've got uh, Beauregard here. Now, you'll remember last time we sent this wagon train that was here over here to kind of serve as a reserve wagon train. Down here in Norfolk, we had another baggage train, or uh, I say baggage train, you can call it that if you want. It's supply wagons, baggage train, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this provides supply to moving armies that aren't at good supply places. So we had captured one here at Norfolk, which was abandoned by the Union. We are sending this here to Richmond. We had some other things going on here. We had the Suffolk militia that had moved over here from Suffolk just to kind of take this since it had been abandoned. We have a squadron here. Uh, we've got Buchanan, which is, which is active. We're going to talk about that in a minute. We're going to go through all the Navy here in a minute. We've got this arsenal here. We've got some naval engineers that could help us uh, with certain things to do with the naval war. We're going to talk about that eventually. We've got the Norfolk Garrison, which is actually pretty darn strong. It's got an 80 here. Uh, it's got an 80 power, so that's something that I think allows us to then take this Suffolk militia and move it back to Suffolk. We've so when you move something, you just click on it, you drag it where you want. Oh, hold on, let's hit delete. That gets us back. You may have seen that little blue pop up that made it want to merge with the supply train. We do not want to do that. We just want it to go back here to this region. This is good. And now it'll tell us it's going to take seven days for these guys to get back over here to Suffolk. But we kind of want to cover as many regions here as we can so that the Union can't just land an amphibious force. Um, so we're going to move the Suffolk mission or uh, militia over. We are going to move. Now, you may remember we have this squadron up here called the Virginia Squadron that we've got uh, up here at Richmond. We are going to move these guys. Let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, you saw we had this nice admiral here, uh, Buchanan. He's got an ironclad that's being built for him. We're going to move these these guys down here, this Richmond force. Oops, not the Richmond force, I'm sorry. The Virginia squadron. We're going to move them down here to our anchor to Norfolk. Uh, to this nice big naval base. And when they get down here, we'll decide what we want our composition to be underneath that admiral. But we got some nice little ships here. Let's get them, you know, down down the James River here to Norfolk. Um, oh, heavy guns. Now, we, we just captured these. Uh, the other two things we captured, the baggage train um, and this artillery we have been we're sending that those on to richmond but these heavy guns it makes more sense i think to have out here at norfolk now what we're going to do is we've got the norfolk garrison here we're going to take these guns and we're going to put it inside the garrison okay now one thing you'll notice and maybe we haven't talked about so we've got the norfolk garrison you see the units the power uh, that they have this is pretty good for a nice little you know just for a little garrison it says inside Norfolk, okay? You can, so this stack are guys, now we're moving the Suffolk militia, but they're still here. This is not inside Norfolk. They're out here. They're camped outside of the garrison. Um, we also, we might as well, mm, let's go ahead and put him in the garrison as well, just to protect him. I mean, you don't want this naval engineer, you know, what, camped out here in the woods. We might as well put him in the garrison. Now, if you ever go to the special orders here, you can see interstructure, force march. You could also, some of these are fixed, but 
this button right here is exit structure. So if you want to make sure something doesn't get besieged and it, uh, you know, is out fighting or, you know, taking on whatever may enter the region, you would want to exit the structure. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. This first button is for all the movement. So like move by rail, move by river, uh, and you just have other things here that you can look at once they become uh, active. And then here you have kind of what you can do with the armies or the cores or promotions. And then finally, you can build depots. You can knock down depots. That's what this third button is. Okay, so I think we've taken care of Norfolk. We've got all these guys together. We've got Buchanan. He's just sitting there in port. We've got the militia moving back. That's great. Oh, so let's go up here. Now we've got John Magruder up here. Magruder just showed up. So he's locked. Now we had all these generals that were sitting at Richmond with nothing to do. We've added a couple of these guys, Ruggles and Whiting. We've added them into Magruder's force to give him enough command. Um, so again, he is out of the chain of command because we cannot yet form corps, divisions, or armies yet. So the only in command we have is Beauregard, uh, or in the chain of command. Magruder is, again, out of the chain of command, but we can add, so this would be four, he's a one star, four, 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 that would give us 12, right? Um, they're out of the chain of command, so it's cut in half, and we've got six. Uh, but we only need five. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, when we talk about the elements. Uh, again, we don't count the supply wagons. They do not need command. So Magruder's, uh, you know, got this kind of little Richmond fast force that we can hopefully move around. Uh, we've got this. Uh, Johnston's fine. Now we do have uh, these guys. Uh, this Winchester militia had come up here because Harper's Ferry had been abandoned. We've now got a little small, I don't know, we don't have recon on these guys yet. Uh, it's, it looks like it's a U.S. Marine Corps group. That's all we know. Um, it says maybe they have a power of 14. Oh, I'm sorry, that's us. Also here, Winchester Militia. Um, we just don't have good detection on these guys yet. What we do have, so our guys, we have set them to a defensive posture. So they're not going to attack anyone. They're hanging back. They're using their one entrenchment. They're staying defensive. And we've got them at retreat if engaged. So if this force thinks it's big enough to run into our militia here and run them out, we're going to let them run out of town and we'll just head back here to Winchester and set up shop. Harper's Ferry is nice to have, but realistically, we have no way to defend it right now. Johnston can't move. Um, you know, he's got a nice force that's building here, but it, there's nowhere for him to go. Now, remember, while we're down here, so we've got that set. They'll probably get knocked back here to Winchester. Hopefully, they'll retreat really fast and not lose too much. Um, we could set them to full defensive posture, but I don't want them just to be scared off. I wouldn't mind them to fire a couple of shots and just make sure these guys have something, right? Now, you'll remember we're building Wharton's Brigade, brigade which... Uh, is the 73 power force or what will become 73 but they've got sharpshooters so that's great armisteads is the big one look at all these elements here um and you'll see they have no commanders and they they take at least four it's just showing four now uh of command and so you know eventually we'll be adding them there to johnston we also have these forces in fredericksburg that are building uh, let's go down to Fredericksburg. This is Wise's Brigade and Mahone's Brigade. Same deal with these guys. Uh, we'll eventually be adding them uh, to Beauregard, which we may need very quickly because this force, this is, every one of these uh, bubbles is three units. So there's a lot going on. Now going west here, so let's start going west and let's talk a little bit about strategy. We're going to be trying to hold this rail line here, Charlottesville to Staunton. That's where we're going to drop these guys back to. And then this rail line is the most important rail line in the game as a Confederate player. This It runs all the way to uh, past Knoxville. So you're down into Tennessee, comes to Chattanooga, 
You know, this is incredibly important. This is your east-west line as the southern player. Now, luckily, gosh, sorry, if I, I didn't mean to make you dizzy there if I did. Now, luckily, you know, we've already pushed up here. So we've got some space where we can drop back. And we will be dropping these guys back as fast as we can uh, once these guys become active. And I think that's in one or two turns. Let's see, two turns. We'll go try to take Lewisburg. You know, they've probably only got a little garrison here. Now, we don't know yet, but these guys will probably drop back to Covington, let's say. And we're going to have this force come down here. We will also be bringing generals that are better than Floyd over. And as a matter of fact, we know we're going to do that. Let's take Thompson and Evans. Um, Thompson is a good commander. He's got some special abilities. He for supply and raiding. Evans is a drunkard. <laughs> it always cracks me up. But this only applies if he's the leader of the stack. So as long as he's going with Thompson, he's good. That does not apply to him. So let's get these guys over here at least to Staunton. So all I did was pick up their card, just like you would if you were playing a board game. I picked him up, and I'm going to move them over here to Staunton. And it's going to take them nine days. And you can see here. Now, if so, I'm going to hit delete to go back moves. If we wanted to move them a, a certain way, so up here or back here, we would just go boink, boink, boom, boom. You can, you can do waypoints like that. So just wanted to point that out as well. We're going to get these guys out here and eventually take over uh, our guy, John B. Floyd's force. Uh, he's buzzing, or he's beeping here. He could potentially uh, enter a structure. Okay, just always kind of look through these. You, you never quite know. You'll get used to it as the game goes on, what they could possibly do. But those special orders are very helpful. Now, looking down at our uh, messages, we had... You know, we've already looked at these hasty defenses, Magruder, we talked about Magruder. Then it says, a future army of the West is slowly assembling in Little Rock under Ben McCullough, but a three-star general will be required to create it officially. Now, you might remember uh, from a previous episode, we are allowed early in the game here to form three armies. Now, we haven't been able to do that yet. We've only got the Army of the Potomac. Joseph Johnston... Uh, that we've seen up here in the Shenandoah Valley, either next turn or the turn after that, we'll be able to form the Army of the Shenandoah. So we'll have two. That's great. Our third army is going to be out here to the west. Um, and so here we are in Little Rock. So we just got that message. So let's kind of go out here a little bit and just kind of see what we have in the theater. It's not a whole lot. Once you get west, early in the game uh, here, once we get west of Charleston, so you can see Floyd up here, uh, you can see Johnston here, once we go west, here's this big rail line I was talking about, that as the Confederates, we will do everything that we can to defend. Uh, but once you get out here, I mean, we've got... Uh, a garrison here in New Madrid, just south of Illinois. So this is the southern tip of Illinois, where you know Union forces will be coming down. They have, you know, they have a nice force in St. Louis, uh, that will be, you know, pressuring us. Let's put it that way. Um, we have this in Memphis. You might remember we moved the supply train over from Corinth. Corinth is important. We, you know, Corinth is a nice staging ground, as is Memphis. This is kind of a, your iron curtain right here. You don't want to let this go uh, once U.S. Grant starts coming down here. Uh, you may remember we're developing territory here in Corinth. Um, so we've moved our wagon train over. We've got a force here. We've got the Memphis force. Uh, you know, it's the Tennessee Brigade. Um, it doesn't have a whole lot. Actually, we talked about these elements. Uh, this has only got one element, the 12th Tennessee. It could have all of these, and it will eventually get stocked up with those, but it's pretty small right now. You've got a cavalry group, uh, but that's about it. I mean, until you get down to New Orleans. So let's go south, and you can see, you know, straight down here. Now we've got 
some ships out here in the Mississippi. We'll go over that uh, at the end of this episode, some more ships. So here we are, uh, New Orleans, we've got some things building, uh, but quite, oh, let's click to the right and let's click to the left for New Orleans. We just put this militia guy down here and we've got a ship. So that's it. So let's go back north here. Um, so we've got this little fighting force in Memphis and now we've started to, to get some things. What they're saying will be the Army of the West as soon as we get a three-star general out here. So, we'll, you know, we're going to be looking in future episodes of trying to promote someone to three-star uh, as soon as we can to turn this into the actual Army of the West. As you can see now, McCullough is a one-star general. Um, so that, you know, he's giving four, but he's out of the chain of command because this has not been formed into an army yet, which will be this button, form an army. Um, so he's not done that yet. So he's cut in half. So he's only a two. Uh, but this is a pretty nice force, right? The third Texas, the first Arkansas. We got some cavalry coming in here. We have some mounted uh, artillery or uh, some horse artillery. So that's good. You know, we've got another battery of artillery, so this is a nice little force. Now, remember, we still have J.O. Shelby here, who is a fantastic cavalry general. Just looking at this very quickly, I'm guessing we might want to put these two guys, when they can move, they're locked right now. And they will be locked for three turns, as is kind of standard. When these things get placed on the map, there's about a three-turn build there so about six weeks it takes to form these guys in um, but we may end up taking these two pieces of cavalry and giving them to J.O. Shelby but that is yet to be determined so there's not a whole lot we can do with these guys they're locked they're just sitting out here we will eventually start uh, forming up troops out here buying troops remember that's up here when we want to buy troops we'll do it up there let's look at our playing cards so we we've kind of looked at the map now uh, and you get the kind of the general sense of what's going on. Um, I think we've already got an export bale down here. Remember, we can only export bales from down here. Let's see if that's true. Yep. Oh, you can see it here. Yeah, export bales. The decision was made zero turns ago. We'll get $15,000 for that. Uh, so we have two other things I want to do before we end this episode. Um, I want to buy some more troops early in the game as the southern player. You should be buying every bit of troop that you can. Let's look at our almanac and make sure. So here's forces, uh, war production. This is what we've got building right now. Um, we did not order this, the CSS Virginia. The game, this was already done by the game as we came into it. We've got nothing various. Treasury, we've talked about that. We don't want to do anything there. Government, we know we don't want to do anything there. Uh, so that's really it. You know, when you talk about decisions, you're going to be looking at your war production. Now, we will have to build up our reinforcements down here and our replacements. We're going to be going into that um, in a future episode. We're not going to do it right now. We need to form up as many troops as we can so we don't want to use the conscripts or the war supplies for that. Um, so when you look at decisions you might have to make, you're going to really be looking at war production, treasury, interior, government. There's That's where all of your decisions lie for the most part. And you will get messages telling you that you have new decisions that are available. Now, we already knew North Carolina. Sometimes these pop back up. When you restart the game, all your messages will pop back up. But that's fine. Um, oh, let's go back to our almanac. Look at... Aye, aye, aye. We already had forces up. If you click it again, it closes out. Now let's look at our Navy really quickly. So a quick way to sort this is if you just want to see naval units, click on land units and exit out. So now we just have naval units and click on uh, locked units. This shows you every active Navy unit that you have. So let's go see where all of our active naval units are. Carolina runners. Hey, great. Okay. They're out here running the blockade. Now they have taken a little bit of damage. You can see here. Clicking on here, 
uh, so this is the hunter squadron you'll see I'm gonna have all of our ships that we can that are good for it out here running the blockade to try to get us more war supply and more money that's what they do if they can run this blockade it's a little abstracted but you will get a message every time saying hey this and I think that we did let's see uh, yep Sir, our blockade runners in the Gulf blockade, which is actually down here, we're over at the Atlantic blockade, we'll look at this in a minute, because these guys got hit, so they could not run it, but our guys in the Gulf did. Uh, blockade runners from the Gulf blockade have carried zero money and seven war supplies to our harbors. That's great. We need all the war supply we can get early in the war. Um, so looking at these guys again, here's the usual orders I have out here. Uh... Yeah, we don't want them to defend. We want them to, we want them to be in a defensive posture. Uh, we do not want them to defend and retreat. We don't want. These are blockade runners. We don't want them fighting really at all. So we want them to retreat if engaged. But you can do this also very simply on its special orders. This special order is evade combat. It's used to evade naval patrols in seas and rivers tra traversed during a move. So that's what you, that's the order you always want on for these blockade runners. Okay, so let's go down the list. Those are the Carolina runners. They're okay. Now they're a little hurt, and if they get hurt anymore, we'll have to bring them back to port so that they can get fixed up. Now the Georgia squadron, aha, that's right. This is Tatnall. This guy, um, oh, I guess when our save happened, it didn't keep this. This guy is a uh, pretty good admiral. Right now he's a 421. We're bumping him up uh, because he was eligible for promotion. You might remember that from a previous episode. Um, so let's look at his other. Yep, so we're going to promote him. All you do is click on that, and then you can see these red. It's kind of a, you know, lights up. It, it reminds me of the old press your luck game. Uh, that lights up, so you know. Um, we're going to put these guys on evade combat. And if you ever look here, you can distant unload. So if you have transports, you can unload trip troops and fleet bombardment. But we're going to do evade combat. And while that Georgia squadron is up here, what we're going to do is take this Georgia squadron and put it out here in the Atlantic blockade box. You see that's going to take 11 days. We are going to change his so it's defensive posture but we want him to retreat no matter what now you see you know you see the line that he's going to trace to get out here now this these guys the hunter squadron that are already out here so let's click on that again we are going to take them and merge them with this group when it gets out here because we want them to be under some kind of command so that's great so we'll get an admiral out there we'll look at that further later on Gulf Squadron, these are our guys out here. We want to keep them separate. We have no Admiral out here. You can see they both have the Evade Combat Special Order. They're both lit up for these guys. Uh, so yeah, there you go. That, that's what we have down here in the Gulf. Uh, we have the Texas Squadron and the Gulf Squadron. So we're just going straight down here. Um, the Island 10 Squadron is up in Lake Tennessee. Okay. They're just kind of floating up here, the southern part of Illinois. We're going to take them and put them actually out in the river. Uh, the river gets a little dark, you see, when we're over the river hex. Now he's going to move out to here one day. All of these guys, I always put offensive, offensive, because we want to stop any kind of troop transport from coming down here. That's the purpose of these guys. Um, and so we're going to... You know, have these guys out in the river ready to blast away if we can. Now, you'll notice in a lot of these places, we have garrisons, talking about land troops. Um, so, like, we have an Island 10 garrison. Almost all of these are locked. Now, they may become unlocked at some point, but you'll get a message to that effect. So, don't worry, like, oh, gosh, I'm missing something. It will pop up in a message if it's important uh, for them, you know. 99% of the time. I don't want you to come back in the comments and say, oh my god, you know, I just had a whole army massacred because you told me it would come up. Anything to do with with uh, activation is going to pop up. 
So we just did Island Tim. Let's go to the Mississippi Squadron. Okay, I had already moved these out, I think, before the episode started. So these guys, although I did make a mistake, uh, we want to take the transports out. Okay, so we just, you know, clicked on it and moved it out. Louisiana transports. We want them to go back to New Orleans to the port. We do, we do not want these guys out here. For, let's just make sure. Yeah, you just put it on land, like over the anchor. Yeah, so it's going to take one day. They'll go back to port. Uh, we want to save these transports. I mean, there's absolutely no reason to have them out here fighting. Now, we can also out, have them out trying to, uh, you know, move supplies around, do all that, but not at this point. So Mississippi Squadron, though, we have gunboats, and we want those offensive, offensive. Same reason. Anything that would come here, any Union force uh, that would try to unload, sometimes you'll have them, you know, come in here and try to take New Orleans very quickly. You don't want that. Now, remember, we know we have a naval force here because of this blue one. And what is that? That's the CSS Manassas. We'll be moving that out with our Gulf Force uh, uh, when when it's ready to go. It's locked right now. It hasn't been built. So uh, Island 10, we just formed these Louisiana transports. That's what we sent back to uh, New Orleans. We've got the Mississippi Squadron, the Nashville Squadron. Let's go up to Nashville. Okay, these guys are new. We haven't done anything with them. We'll see, we've got transports and gunboats. Let's move the transports out into their own stack. Nashville, meanwhile, will put out here in the river and give it an offensive offensive in case the Union's trying to move things here. We'll at least be able to take a few shots at it. Uh, Texas Squadron, we already saw them out here in the blockade run. Uh, Vicksburg Squadron, we've got them out in the river uh, in the Mississippi, out by Vicksburg. We got them offensive, offensive. Great. And then finally, the Virginia Squadron, which we talked about. This is that, that group of people, and you can see or this group of ships. Six, seven days, they're coming down here to Norfolk to meet up with our Admiral. So I think that is uh, covers all the naval, which is great. Every bit of naval that's not fix that we could actually move so we'll just take these off for next time uh you know at the end of every turn i kind of look at this make sure there's nobody that we're forgetting um you know we, I, I think we've gone through every every bit of this exhaustively this turn uh the last thing i'll do is look and see what kind of troops we want to buy so let's do this very quickly and then we're going to end this episode, and then the minute we come back for the next episode, we'll run the turn and take a look at it. Now, what I want to do is go to Mid-Atlantic Troops, because we're really looking for these Virginia guys. Now, we've got another 73 here. That's 68 money. We've got plenty of money. 26 conscripts and 6 war supply. So not bad. Now, the biggest thing we're running into is conscripts. Our manpower is not great. Um, now, for a good force like this, generally, you don't want to stick it out somewhere. Like, let's say, you know, if we were able to, to put it here. Because they could run a force here and just destroy it before it's ever formed up when it has no combat power. So we want to be very wary of that. Now, these guys cost 28 conscripts. These guys are 26 conscripts, but more war supply. Interesting. Okay. Well, these guys have sharpshooters. Um, these, guy, these guys just have more men, but less power. They're not as good. So we are going to go ahead and build another one of these forces. So this will be three forces here. We want to try to get as much to Manassas as we can. Now, the other thing we're going to do this turn, though, is we're going to put out as many volunteers as we can in these little places, like Falmouth, um, Leesburg. Okay, we're still doing okay. We've, we've got two more of these we could build. We're going to put one in Winchester. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because the Union, you don't want them to just be able to run their cavalry wild out here. Um, and so we're going to put little forces that, that throw up a small zone of control. And also, you know, if they have cavalry that are trying to run through here, um, provide a little resistance. Not a lot. Look, it's combat power 15. Let's be serious. Let's put another one 
I'm tempted to put it at Hampton Roads, but let's be a little more cautious and put it at Williamsburg. Okay, so now we're down to 19 and 74. Um, as the Confederate player, again, you want to try to build forces as fast as you can, no matter what. Now we have this Marine group. That's 10 conscripts, 31 money, war supply. That's not bad. You know, we really want to guard against them being able to do something here. Why don't we, since we're moving these guys, let's put some Marines here at Norfolk. Um, that'll work. That gets us down to nine. Uh, we could do, I believe, a cavalry. Eight conscripts. Hmm. Oh, 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 oh. We've got to do this. Headquarter support. Can't believe I almost forgot that. These headquarters support units are awesome. Um, they cost a lot of money. They do cost some war supply and they take a while to build, but they are gonna do a ton for you. So, oh, whoops. Um, they add to the bonus, the command bonus that you get. Um, yeah, they add a lot of, a lot of things and we'll get into this i kind of want to you know get this this episode complete here we're at about 40 minutes i don't like to go over that we're going to start building that with beauregard every time one of those headquarters support units pop up build it build it and put it with your armies uh, make sure each one has one now see it's gone we only had one available it'll be two or three i think when this guy builds uh, it said 60 days, so that's four turns. In four turns, then we'll get another one, and we'll put that guy with Johnston. And then in four turns after that, we'll put the next one out west with the Army of the West. Uh, they give you command, extra uh, command points. Is really It's a really great bonus. Okay, so I think that we've done a lot this turn. We've really looked over things. We got the game kind of moving. The minute we come back for the next episode, I'm going to run the turn. Um... And we're going to look over the results. We may even have a battle, and we can start looking at combat results. So as always, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you uh, enjoyed this episode. I hope you learned something and that you're liking this game and might give it a try. Uh, as always, this is Strategy Gaming Dojo. I will see you next time.